We're all grateful, especially in the political science department, for the Kennedy Center for helping to host this lecture. We've had a wonderful opportunity in our department to have Professor Ogai, who will be speaking to you's wife, Professor Ogai, <laughs> teaching in our department. She's been teaching a couple of classes for us this semester. And we wanted to also take advantage of Mr. Ogai. Shall we call him Mr. Ogai to distinguish the two Professor Ogais? <laughs> We're grateful to have Mr. Ogai, who's had a wealth of practical experience on a topic that's very timely. Uh, you can't watch a news program these days without discussion of U.S. exchange rates and where U.S. exchange rates are going. And here we have a man who spent a life practicing in this field and studying in this field able to speak to us today. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us, and we appreciate the Kennedy Center hosting this. Professor Ogai belongs to uh, so now I'm talking about Mr. Ogai. <laughs> Professor Ogai belongs to a distinguished core of Japanese elites. He came to the United States um, 1954 to 1955 as a Fulbright scholar. Um, I've been a Fulbright scholar in Japan. It's not nearly as elite <laughs> as it is as now as it was then. After World War II, the best and brightest Japanese um, students were brought over to the United States in the Fulbright program and its predecessor. They were doing it before they, there even was a Fulbright program. And in my experiences over in Japan, uh, you can't talk to a CEO, <laughs> prominent um, academic, and not have them be telling you about their Fulbright experience in the United States. So I'm confident that Professor Ogai was an excellent student was selected to this program, came to the United States where he studied at Princeton. Went on, as many of these Fulbright scholars did, they didn't become academics necessarily. They went into jobs in Japanese industry, banking, and other sectors of the economy. And as you can read in the flyer, um, Professor Ogai has had a variety of jobs um, with different companies, all working with um, international exchange. He's been posted in London. He's been posted in Amsterdam. Um, has worked with some of these companies, Sumitomo, Mako Securities, Daiwa, Europe, um, all um, famous companies that deal with um, finance, international exchange securities. Uh, when he retired is when he became Professor Ogai. Um, that's actually quite common in Japan, that retirement occurs at an earlier age and people will go on to a second career. And so he taught in Niigata Prefecture at Keiwa College. Um, as a professor um, of international finance. It's uh, our pleasure to welcome Professor Ogai, and I'll turn the time over to him. Short man. Hello, everyone. Um, before I start my speech, I want, I want to draw your attention to the possibly misleading and confusing way of describing the rise or fall of the yen exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis the United States dollar. Suppose the exchange rate was 100 yen yesterday, that is per dollar, and if the rate today is 95 yen, has the yen fallen and become weaker? No exactly opposite. The yen in this case actually has risen and become stronger. On the other hand, if the yen rate today is 105 yen, actually it is around 104 yen, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> compared with 100, 100 yen yesterday, actually it was 102 yen yesterday, today 104 yen today. The yen in fact has fallen um, I mean, oh, yes, the yen in fact has fallen and weakened instead of uh, uh, strengthened. Now, now, please look at the print one, actually, the page three or sheet three of the handouts. That is the chart of the yen dollar exchange rate for the last 30 years. Please observe that the vertical axis is inverted. So, um, you'll see 350 yen is low at the bottom, and zero yen, this is uh, for 
uh, humor. The zero yen is high on the top. Um, okay, now I start my speech. The <laughs> section one in the advance of inflation, the establishment of 300 yen to the dollar parity. In September 1939, the Second World War broke out in Europe. On this side of the globe, in December 1941, the Pacific War was started. The foreign exchange and any international financial transactions practically ceased to exist. Japan surrendered unconditionally to the Allied forces in August 1945. Thus, the Pacific War was ended. The Allied forces occupied Japan in September that year. The, the occupation forces in Tokyo called the representatives of the Japanese government and presented the intended three principal points of, the po of their policy. Number one was the enactment of the new constitution, which everyone was expecting. Number two was to change the national language, our language, that is, to make English the country's national language, annihilating the Japanese language, which we Japanese people had been using ever since their history started some thousand years ago. And number three, it was to abolish the yen as Japan's national currency. The yen was established nearly 80 years ago, as soon as Japan was reborn, so to speak, as modern nation state by Meiji Restoration. And the yen state as the symbol of Japanese economic developments ever since. These latter two points of the, pro of the pro of proposal astonished and shocked the Japanese representatives. They repeated negotiations with the occupation forces and eventually succeeded in convincing them and had the last two proposals withdrawn. The Japanese language and the Japanese yen were somehow saved. In 1949, Joseph a certain Joseph Dodge president of the National Detroit Bank of Detroit, was dispatched to Japan to make a diagnosis of the Japanese economy. He concluded that the most serious economic problem for Japan to solve was the inflation, and claimed that the top priority of the economic policy should be to stabilize the prices. Dodge recommended the reduction in the government subsidies and uh, the establishment of the single exchange rate. In 1949, the government drew up a super balanced natu national budget or the budget realizing surplus. The pace of inflation became slower. The exchange rate of the yen ceased to decline any further and soon began to recover. As the establishment of the single exchange rate was was one of the most important pillars of the so-called Dodge Line. The single rate of 360 yen to the dollar was formally determined in April 1949. By this, Japan parted from the economy without the exchange rate, um, which had existed since July 1941. Why was the new rate made 360 yen to the dollar? It was induced from the comparison of the respective rates of uh, price rises of Japan and of the United States from the base year of 1935. This sort of standard rate of 300 yen to the dollar was kept unchanged for as long as 22 years and eight months. Since then, until it was upvalued to 308 yen to the dollar in 1971. The 360 yen rate ruled Japan in the meantime as if it was the economic constitution of the country. Now we come to section two, the age of leaps in the 1960s. In April 1952, as a peace treaty with the Allied forces came into effect, Japan returned to an independent state. 
as soon as in May of the same year, Japan was admitted into the Bretton Woods Agreement to IMF, or International Monetary Fund. And a year later, it notified IMF that it decided upon the foreign exchange parity of 360 yen to the dollar. The annual rate of the real-term economic growth of Japan continued to be more than 10% during most of 1960s. Its GNP, or gross national products, in 1968 amounted to $141.9 billion, surpassing the GNP of West Germany. Japan was now only second to the United States as a world economic power. After 1965, Japan's international balance of payments maintained its surplus trend, and in 1968, the balance of its external assets exceeded its external liabilities, reversing a long trend of the past. Japan became a net creditor nation. The yen was becoming a strong currency steadily. Now come to section three. The start of the era of the rising yen. Sunday, August 15th of 1971 is perhaps the most memorable date for the post-war history of the global foreign exchange markets. As on this date, President Nixon declared the suspension of the conversion of the dollar into gold. It is remembered as Nixon shock, Nixon shock in Japan. Upon this news, the closure of all the major foreign exchange markets in Europe was decided. When the markets were reopened a week later, there no longer was a parity with gold, and there was the consensus anticipation of the massive selling of the dollar, which just became a paper money. The exchange rates against the dollar had no choice but to be floated or freely moving according to the market forces. The new freely floating exchange market in Tokyo began with a new rate of 342 yen to the dollar. The yen continued to rise against the dollar slowly but steadily. Many countries were afraid of the return to the dark age before the war, of the unlimited, unregulated, and uncontrolled uh, fluctuation of uh, exchange rates and or exchange controls. Their representatives met together at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. and talked over the possibility of restoring the order and discipline in the foreign exchange markets of the world. They reached an agreement on December 18, 1971 to what was later known as the Smithsonian Agreement. They set up a new parity table in which the yen was revalued by the widest margin. It was revalued by 16.88%, and its new parity was fixed at 308 yen per dollar. The second was the West German mark, which was revalued by 13.56%. After all, However, the convertibility of the dollar with gold was not revived. While the Japanese government continued, to, uh, continued its serious efforts to avoid another revaluation of the yen, America carried out the devaluation once again of their currency against gold in February 1973. Japan decided to move to the freely floating system of the foreign exchange rate of the yen. Countries in Europe followed suit soon and floated their currencies against the dollar. Now we move to section four. The alternation of the rise and fall of the yen under the long-term basic trend of the strengthening, strengthening of the yen. As another yen, was floated, it began to rise sharply. 
and soon reached the level of 260 yen to the dollar. But as the Fourth Middle Eastern War broke out in November 1973, and as it caused the sharp rise of the oil price in line with OPEC strategies, the yen, the currency of Japan, which has no oil resources of its own, began to fall radically in what was called oil shock in Japan. It dropped to as low as 300 yen to the dollar. Already in January 1974, the weakness of the yen lasted throughout 1974 and 75. But in 1976, the yen turned around and shifted to a gradual upward trend as Japan managed to increase its exports, which were now cheaper, thanks to the lower yen, the weaker yen. The yen continued to strengthen in 1977 and 78. It rose to as high as 176 yen to the dollar in late October of 1978. The United States took this timing and acted in defense of the dollar. This is the way I pronounce this word, my generation, for many years. But I came to notice that you guys here now say defense, defense. So <laughs> shall I follow that way and should I say the United States acted in defense of the dollar? <laughs> that's, that's cool, isn't it? President Carter, Carter announced a wide range of measures to check and hopefully reverse the declining trend of the American currency. In Japan, it was called the Carter shock. Again, another shock coming from, Japan, coming from America. The further fall of the dollar was avoided. Foreign exchange markets restored stability. During the first half of the 1980s, an extremely interesting phenomenon occurred to the, an, to the analysts of foreign exchange. As I started repeatedly until that time, the ups and downs of the yen exchange rate took place almost precisely according to the performance of Japan's international trade and current account balance of payments. You can confirm it from print two, just briefly. Um, as I will come back for more details to this later. Okay. But in 1981, and afterwards for several years, if not longer, apparently the exchange rate between the yen and the dollar was predominantly determined by the interest rate, the interest rate differentials between these two countries, rather than the balance of payments differentials. The background reason was that the American economy was showing a very strong performance under President Reagan's exceptionally positive economic policy called Reaganomics. On one hand, and that on the other, the determined anti-inflationary monetary policy pursued by the Federal Reserve Board Chairman then, Paul Volcker, brought about an almost astronomical level of interest rates, for example, the yield on the long-term government bonds was a, as high as 13%, while the short-term interest rate at one time was as high as over 25% then. The yen fell sharply to 263 yen in 1985. It was only natural, as the dollar assets were, were so attractive in terms of the yield and the outflow of capital from Japan soared. And it was exactly in spite of the increasing surplus on international trade and current accounts of Japan. At the same time, the United States' deficit on its current account balance of payments continued to rise sharply. The strong dollar of that time was called super dollar. It was also praised and admired as Reagan dollar or Volcker dollar. But a too strong dollar curtailed the international competitive power of American products substantially. 
the country's current account balance of payments was seriously affected also by its inflated domestic demand caused mainly by its large federal budget deficit and produced the excess imports of about 100 billion dollars representing 3% of GNP annually both in 1984 and 85. On the other hand, Japan's current account surplus jumped to $49.2 billion, or 3.6% of GNP, from $6.9 billion in 1982. For comparison, in 1985, West Germany realized a current account surplus of no more than $12.7 billion, only just about one quarter of the Japanese surplus. In 1985, dozens of protectionist bills and uh, resolutions were passed by the U.S. Congress. The Reagan ad administration began to try seriously to avoid the explosion of protectionism in the country and rather focus on the too strong dollar and the gigantic trade deficit resulting from it. The country's real-term GNP, which grew 6.6% in 1984, managed to grow at no more than 2.2% in 1985, mostly because of the deterioration in its foreign trade balance. At last, on September 22, 1985, by the in initiative of the United States, the historic meeting of finance ministers and central bank governors from G5 or a group of five countries was held at Plaza Hotel in New York in strict secrecy. By the way, group of five included, can you tell, the United States, Great Britain, France, West Germany, and Japan. The Japanese delegates were headed by finance minister of the time, Noboru Takeshita, in order to keep their departure from the G5 meeting strictly in secret, Japan's Takeshita traveled to Narita International Airport in golfers' clothes on the pretense that he was joining in a golf competition to be held in Narita on that day. Anyway, at this G5 meeting, it was agreed that the United States would rectify their domestic economic policies and reduce the excessive demand on one hand, and that, that on the other, the monetary authorities of the G5 countries would intensify their concerted dollar selling intervention in foreign exchange markets to stop and reverse the strengthening of the dollar. It was what came to be called Plaza Agreement, this time not Plaza Shock, but Plaza Agreement. They were resolved to avoid the hard landing or the free fall of the dollar and aim at its soft landing. The dollar kept falling and other countries, other currencies rose. For example, the Japanese yen, which was traded at 240 yen to the dollar just before the Plaza Agreement, strengthened to nearly 200 yen to the dollar at the end of 1985. The yen continued to rise throughout the following two years. Um, in 1989 and 1990, the dollar exchange rate improved as Bush, that is, of course, Bush Senior Administration of the United States seriously tried again to defend, to defend the value of the dollar, or to defend, which is correct today, perhaps defend. Okay, I heard the. Uh, announcer or the caster on TV shout, you know, defend, offend, so I'll follow them. So the United Administration of the United States seriously tried to defend the value of the dollar through the measures to cut its trade deficit. 1990, the yen exchange rate fell to below the 160 yen level, briefly. The factors which worked in the background were, one, the Bush administration tried hard to cut down America's trade deficit with Japan politically through the bilateral U.S.-Japan negotiations. 
Two, the economy of America recovered. Three, the Federal Reserve was therefore raised the basic interest rates. And four, the international geopolitical situation served to strengthen the dollar. That was the outbreak of the Gulf War between 1990 and 1991, involving Iraq and Kuwait. The yen had a habit of being sold whenever the oil-producing Middle East was thrown into disorder. In 1993, the yen reversed its previous downward trend and turned strong. The fundamental cause was, cause was, after all, the increase in Japan's balance of payments surplus on trade and current accounts. Japan's current account of that year realized that net surplus of $131.4 billion. This level was unprecedented and has not been exceeded up until last year. Again, uh, from the print three of the handouts, you can confirm it. Two years I mentioned were 1993 and last year 2003. So until the year of 2002, the record uh, current account surplus of Japan realized in 1993 was not broken. In 1993, the yen reversed its previous downward trend and turned strong. The fundamental cause was, after all, the increase in Japan's balance of payments surplus. Sorry, <laughs> I repeated the same thing. The, the climax of the rising yen was reached in 1995, the historic momentary highest yen rate of 79.75 yen to the dollar was realized in April 1995. This was a record rate ever since the establishment of the yen's parity at 360 yen to the dollar in 1949. This record high of 79 yen and 75 sen has not been broken up until today for the last nine years or so. The principal causes for the jump of the yen were, one, needless to say Japan's current account surplus was substantial, but two, even more than that, the immediate trigger was a drastic change which took place in a world outside Japan. One was the economic crisis of Mexico, which affected the American economy immediately, directly. At the same time, in Southern Europe, Spain, Italy, and Portugal were in deepening political uncertainties, and their currencies were dumped on foreign exchange markets. The monetary authorities of Japan, Europe, and U.S. intervened aggressively in the foreign exchange markets of the world. The possibility of the 70 yen level of the yen to remain longer was somehow removed. Japan, on top of the intervention, relaxed its monetary policy to prevent the yen from rising again. It lowered its interest rate further in terms of the central bank's official discount rate from 1% to half percent, only half percent. In the year of 1995, indeed, Japan's external surplus on its current account balance of payments was reduced considerably. Uh, yes, please look at print three again. In 1996, the surplus declined further to a mere $65.6 billion. That was just about half the size of three years before. Moreover, the problem of skyrocketing uncollectable loans of many major Japanese commercial and investment banks came up the surface and attracted the attention of the markets. This year, and particularly the following year in 1997. Um, at last, the, one, the once big respectable names such as the Long Term Credit Bank of Japan, the Securities Credit Bank of Japan, and Yamaichi Securities Company all collapsed one after another in the autumn of 1997. 
Japan was driven into a state of all-out crisis of the financial system, which was only comparable to the financial crisis of Japan exactly 70 years before. The whole world dumped anything Japanese, whether it was its currency or its stock or its bonds or its real estate. The yen fell to 147 yen to the dollar in August 1998. But it was the bottom. From there, it recovered quickly. The primary reason for the yen's recovery was that the Japanese government enacted a number of the laws by which to save the struggling banks, among other things, by pouring a huge amount of the government money and to avoid the more serious financial crisis. What's more, about at the same time, the crisis of Russia's foreign liabilities came to the surface and it was reported that some major hedge funds and financial institutions of America would be seriously damaged. The dollar fell sharply. The yen shot up accordingly and reached the level of 115 yen to the dollar already by the end of 1998. For about six years after that, until right now, the yen has been rather stable and it has moved moderately between 101 yen in 1999 and 135 yen in 2002. Today, it is around 104 yen. Yes, I checked it this morning. Till yesterday, it was uh, 102, 103 mostly relatively stronger yen. But today, for whatever reasons, I don't know, the dollar rallied to 100 yen level. By and large, it has been following the classical and theoretical rules based on the fundamental factors, such as the current account balance of payments, interest rates, and political situation of Japan and the United States. Now come to the, my last section, section five, the outlook for the yen exchange rate. So far, I have presented in a sketchy way the history of the yen for about 60 years after the end of the Second World War with emphasis on its foreign exchange conjuncture. First, let, me, let us simplify the task by presuming that the yen, the dollar, or any other currency each is a commodity or merchandise. It is an invisible, intangible commodity or merchandise, of course. Then the exchange rate of the yen is nothing but the price of a merchandise named yen, expressed in terms of the dollar or any other currency. Generally speaking, what determines the price of merchandise is what? The demand for its merchandise and its supply, supply and demand. The economic theory and our daily experience endorse this relationship, don't they? The next question then is what, what factors determine the demand for the yen and its supply? Here we must choose a span of time for which we examine changes in the yen's supply and demand. The foreign exchange dealers actively trading in the markets may concentrate on extremely short-term businesses, such as the delivery in weeks, days, or even hours. When I was a little younger and active in the markets, I often bought and sold currencies. In anticipation of the changes in minutes, or sometimes, sometimes even in seconds, believe it or not. I used to know of a friend in this profession who suffered a heavy loss only in two to three minutes while he had to leave his desk, perhaps for a toilet or something. <laughs> As the market changed unfavorably for him in such a short period of time, since then, we came to nickname, we dealers of that, the bank, changed, we, we, <laughs> we came to nickname the toilet, fatal two minutes. <laughs> It was really fun, yeah. Okay, I'll go to a fatal two minutes. And later, the word was 
just uh, abridged or shortened to just two minutes. Okay, where is he? Two minutes. <laughs> I'll go for two minutes. <laughs> so, instead of saying the restroom or to wash my hands. <laughs> uh, the market moves quickly and violently indeed. The exchange rates jump up and down just on any groundless rumors about or about a rumor about rumors or denial of rumors. The market is full of such professional dealers or speculators, buying and selling on such rum rumors, etc., for instant profit, but often loss as well. Today, I would not deal with such short periods. I would focus on a sort of medium to long-term exchange rates, like several months, a year, and up to two years. So far, I have mentioned over again that the exchange rate of the yen was moved up or down at the performance of Japan's currency account, sorry, current account balance of payments, changed for the better or for the worse. Certainly, the most important factor that affects the medium and long-term trend of the currency's supply and demand, and therefore the foreign exchange prices or rates is the current account results of the country's concern. In case of the price or the rate of the Japanese yen to the dollar, it is a relative performance of the current account results of Japan and of the United States. Please look at print two again. Yeah, as I promised, uh, we will deal with this uh, a little in more details. Um, it shows in a simplified but clear cut table how the gap in current account results between Japan and the United States has affected the yen exchange rate to the dollar for 30 years since the world's exchange rate was floated in 1973. There, a white circle is marked when the gap in Japan's, it, uh, the gap in Japan's favor widened and the yen appreciated against the dollar from the previous year. A white circle is also marked when the gap narrowed and the yen depreciated against the dollar. On the other hand, a black circle is marked if the gap narrowed but the yen rose. And the black circle is also marked if the gap widened but the yen fell notwithstanding. If this far right end column of the table, uh, ah, in this uh, far end, uh, far right end column of the table, you will find two sections marked by square brackets representing four years each. The four years in the first section, ranging from 1982 to 85, stand for the period of the Reaganomics and Volcker's super dollar, which cancelled the current account effect on exchange rates. And the second four year section between 1995 and 98 was when Japan was struck by its all-out financial crisis for the first time in 70 years. I fully explained about these two periods. Um, so these two periods, which were genuinely exceptional, uh, and what happened then, so to speak, were only possible once in 70 years. Let us exclude, therefore, these eight years and count white and black circles for the remaining 22 years. The result is amazing. Did you count them? It is 19 wins, one nine, 19 wins against only three losses. Isn't it a really incredible causality between the current account performance and exchange rate? Secondly, after the balance of, payment, balance of current accounts, it is interest rates of the country's concern that is supposed to affect the exchange rates, as I have been referring to. Thirdly, it is the political elements. By far, the most influential political elements come from the United States. America's political intention has, in the past, determined the basic direction of the trend of the world's currency markets, phenomenally by way of their changed policy, their suggestion of such changes, their intervention by mass, by money, and by muscle. Now, before I finish my speech, as a bonus to you, 
let me try to forecast or predict the yen's exchange rate to the American dollar for the coming six to 12 months. It would be the history of the yen in the future, history in the future. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> the, <laughs> the United States deficit or De def no, this is deficit. The huh? United States deficit on its current account balance of payment last year swelled to $541.8 billion, or 5.1% of its GDP, or gross domestic production products. This was the, oh, and please uh, keep looking at print, print three again. This was the historic high for the country. It is expected to increase further this year. On the other hand, Japan realized its current account surplus of $136.2 billion, equivalent of 3.2% of its GDP last year. The surplus will be even larger, definitely, this year. What we are worried soon will follow is the dollar's drastic fall in terms of its long-term fundamental trend. The United States naturally wishes to avoid the dollar's such free fall, but at the same time to have the value of the dollar reduced steadily to the level at which the, its international <coughs> competitive power is restored. <coughs> during, the, during this year so far, the yen has been hovering mostly between 102 yen and 114 yen. How is the yen going to move from now on? We should perhaps think that the current trend of the slowly rising yen and the slowly falling dollar will com continue. Basically, still for some time in view of the continuing and even widening gap in the external balance of payments between Japan and the US. Among other determining factors for the dollar yen exchange rate, the interest rate differential between the two countries is not expected to undergo any sudden dramatic changes, judging from the economic conditions they have now. By looking back, the interest rate differential anyway did not affect the long-term trend of the exchange rate too seriously. Please refer to print four. The, res the results of the last two 27 years are, oh, and please look at the last column entitled Judge. The results of the last 27 years in, in a similar way. Seven wins, no more than seven white circles against 20 black circles. Further, America's political stance is sometimes decisively important, and Japan's market intervention policy, inevitably influenced by it, is important as well. From this angle, my anticipation is that the United States will carry on the strategy to maintain the trend of quietly falling dollar exchange rate to meet the wishes of the country's manufacturing industries. Incidentally, the chairman of General Motors, one of the most influential com companies politically, claims that the appropriate level of the dollar yen rate is 92 yen to 100 yen per dollar. At the same time, however, America must avoid the free fall of the dollar, which will scare foreign investors and lead to the serious slump of the stock and bond markets. On the Japanese side as well, the Japanese will not welcome a sharp rise of the yen as long as their economy is still suffering from the near deflationary and sluggish conditions. They'll no doubt come back to the market to intervene to avoid the yen's too sharp, too high jump. After all, the governments of both countries will continue to try to aim at a dollar's quiet, gradual, and controlled decline. In other, in another word, the soft landing of the dollar. I notice the time is just about ten minutes before twelve.
But as I started a bit belatedly, could I spend another three minutes or so? Yes. Thank you. My final prediction, most important part, pity on a gentleman who just left. He missed the most important and <laughs> useful part of all my speech. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a bad-natured man. <laughs> my final prediction is, in one word, the continued slow rise of the yen against the dollar in its long-term trend. Just offhand, then, that the turnaround of the steadily rising trend of the yen as we have now may not take place. The end of the steadily rising trend of the yen may not take place until sometime late, uh, late next year when the yen rate will have hit its peak at somewhere around 95 yen, 95 yen to the dollar. This is my strictly private anticipation. If hopefully backed well by the history, the experience, and the theory, it is no guarantee at all. Please do not speculate and buy the yen on the strength of this. If you do, please do so entirely out of your own responsibility. <laughs> the responsibility is not mine, it's all yours. If you incurred losses on your speculations, please, please do not come and demand any compensation from me. <laughs> on the other hand, just, just in case, just in case you made a fortune by your yen buying speculation, I on my part will never go to ask for any share of your profit. <laughs> this is the end of my speech.